coming up on stage is just a great opportunity to test what this training is talking about. And I remember when I just started to teach um, in Balanced View, basically many times I thought that each time I'm going up on stage, I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm going to die. People, and people are looking at me and there's a camera pointing at me. So it won't be just like a, an individual act in my bedroom. It will be like a display of uh, great embarrassment. It doesn't happen anymore. Uh, I feel completely relaxed and at ease and potent inseparably from that. And that's kind of cool. That's part of the beauty of the Balanced View training is that we can really see results in our everyday life exactly as it is. Same action, coming up on stage before, wow, so many thoughts, maybe hard to sleep at night, waking up with a th certain heartbeat. And then today it's just like speaking to my wife and uh, in the same intimacy and openness with nothing, really not much going on. Each one of us, we have the cap capacity of empowered speech, empowered mind, empowered qualities and activities. Everything about us is naturally perfect, exactly as it is. Many of us been, have been trained to believe that we are limited, limited by our thoughts, emotions, sensations, that we are controlled by them, that we are controlled by ideas that keep us, again, very small. You're not good enough. What you're thinking is not right. It's actually a, a dirty thought. You're not open enough. You're not strong enough. And this is something that comes up for many of us. And then the tools that we apply f to try and fight this sense of limitation and a sense of restriction, which is basically internal, then the tools that we apply are usually um, limiting as well. What we are doing is like if something shines forth, we are either indulging it, like thinking why it is there. Take, I don't know, your greatest affliction, something that you suffer from, a thought or a memory from the past. How much has been invested in thinking about it, analyzing it, diving into it in order to change it? A lot. I know that I spend so much time on, on trying to understand my data streams, my thoughts, emotions and sensations <laughs> and other ways to replace that. So something unpleasant shines forth in your experience, a thought or emotion and then there is the immediate trying to better and improve the description. Like feeling lazy? No, I'm, I'm all sprightly and, uh, <laughs> and you know, sun is shining, I'm in Goa and you know, I need to do this and that. And we kind of convince ourselves as though we were, uh, I don't know what. And so replacing or having a negative thought and trying to bring in some butterfly thoughts. Uh, <laughs> and then, which I tried loads in my life. And it was good, you know, in a way, but it, it doesn't lead to permanent uh, benefit and relief. There's always doing, always watching what's coming up. And there is the avoiding, trying not to place ourselves in situations that might stir up data streams, thoughts, emotions and sensations. And in Balanced View we offer such a simple approach that it's so simple that it takes at least six open meetings to really get it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm saying it quite straight here because for some of you it's the first time. Come back again and listen to the talks because it's so simple that it seems to me, initially, it was almost like an insult. Wait, for like two decades, I've been investing so much in trying to change my display to a better one, and then someone, a movement of shining people, comes and says, you don't need to do that. <laughs> I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you're not, you don't know who you're talking to. Um, <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> and I try to fight and I try to, to protest whenever, uh, whenever I heard that I'm perfect as I am, because that's outrageous statement. And, uh, and the fourth approach is to recognize open intelligence. Opening intelligence, it's what's listening to me right now, what's looking at me and what's having all the thoughts and emotions that you have. 
He's interesting, he's boring. I like him, I don't like him. Oh, who's sitting next to me? They look good. I wonder if they're single. <laughs> what knows all of that is open intelligence. Your own open intelligence. Not projecting our intelligence into some kind of a cloud in the sky and, and somewhere far from us, but our power to know. And if we want to introduce ourselves very directly to that, just stop thinking for a moment. What remains when we stop thinking? Alertness, clarity, openness, brightness. This is open intelligence. It's not a special state of mind, and that's also a pitfall that I, 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 I got stuck in many, many years. I thought that this beautiful state <laughs> that is so natural to us requires effort, requires trying hard, requires discipline, <laughs> you know, requires so much doing. And then coming here and saying, just stop thinking for a moment, see what remains. This is open intelligence. This is the basic intelligence that we've been looking for in all our attempts to rearrange our experience. Open intelligence is lively and full of benefit. It's not a void, it's not a, a, a nothing state. It includes and contains all of our thoughts, emotions and sensations, which we call in balanced view data streams. It just saves time. And it's brilliant. Open intelligence and data streams are inseparable, like the color blue in the sky. We cannot separate them into two things. And when we look at our own direct experience, we can see that data cannot be found to have an independent nature. While before being introduced to open intelligence, I, I gave my data streams, loads of them, an independent nature. The anger, ooh, okay, <laughs> the sadness, the desire, the this, the that, the other thing, and then building a whole life story based on momentary descriptions, like bright stars in the night sky, brightly shining data streams. There's nothing we need to do about them, and if we want to enjoy the relief and relaxation that is at the basis of all of our data streams, we simply allow the sun of open intelligence to shine through all of that. Like now there are loads of sky, uh, stars in the sky. We don't really notice them. Most of them are unseen because they've been outshone by the bright daylight. And this is the same with open intelligence in short moments, and that's the practice. So if we want to know what's the practice that we offer here, it's not just an introduction. But in short moments of open intelligence, repeated many times, the instinctive recognition of open intelligence becomes continuous. We just like become confident. We gain confident and we become confident and assured that open intelligence is present within all data. And that provides great relaxation. Right now you don't need to be a seasoned rester or short moment taker. Just you exactly as you are right now, relax as you are. Allow the data stream, the current one, to just flow on by and see that it leaves no trace. By itself, itself releases itself. It's a complicated sentence. I, I needed to say it only once. <laughs> itself releases itself, and that's also amazing. Because I, you know, with all the previous approaches that I spoke about, indulging, avoiding, or replacing, we think that we are doing something to better the situation. Are we? <laughs> The data stream self-releases itself, so why are we at all are bothered by fighting it, trying to indulge, avoid, replace, when openness and clarity are available right here and now? And that's where everything is flipped on its head. So short moments of open intelligence repeated many times, it's like again and again all the heavy load of trying to maintain a perfect identity we drop it to the ground and there's relief. And even if it's momentary relief, that's why short moments, no, none of us is being asked to maintain open intelligence for 
one hour, 30 minutes or, or a day. Just one short moment. That's something that anyone can do. And it requires only openness and interest. Even if you resist what you are hearing right now and you think that it's loads of rubbish, which is a valid thought to have, you know, allow the data stream of this is rubbish be as it is. And you... <laughs> wow. <laughs> we have some sound effects and... When you allow it to be, when you allow it to be as it is, you see there's also no problem with that. There's, there's just openness and clarity. So, that's good. In, in my direct experience of, of this training, uh, I came out, I came to know the training in 2007. A friend basically told me there's something there and you should watch it and I, and I came and listened to a talk and I wasn't convinced. Like I said, I thought I knew it all already, so it's nice that people speak about it, but I don't need it. So, and then something that touched me, I Candice has assurance, like the way she spoke in the video, just someone who knows with great assurance what they're talking about. And then I listened a lot to the media online. <laughs> And I met the training again after three months and then I started to participate in the, in the trainings where it's a text and a group and a trainer that share their experience. And the texts are always speaking about our natural perfection exactly as we are. It's so refreshing because everything that I tried before, whether it's conventional or unconventional, was mainly about uh, based on the assumption that something is wrong with me and I need to reach a destination where I will be fixed. And from this point to this point, there is no guarantee that it will work. And it takes loads of time that just seem to expand and expand. And my sense, sense of failure as a human being was deepening with each attempt that was failing. And then coming here for the first time and hearing you exactly as you are is natural perfection was like both challenging but also kind of cool. And I wanted to get to know it in myself, so that's what I tried. When we speak about complete relaxation in all experiences, it might sound or might feel for some of you like, okay, it sounds fun, but I can't just relax all of the time because stress is so helpful in being effective, so I need to be stressful at times. I need to do, 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 and all of that. What we see in open intelligence, and that's definitely my experience. I, I've, oh, I've been busy before Balanced View in a certain way, and nowadays I, I've never been more busy uh, n than now. Yet, I, I've never been also so relaxed, and these are inseparable. Because when all of the effort to try to rearrange a, a perfect display of data streams is gradually stopping, like the fan being turned off and just stops at one point. We have so much energy that was wasted on nothing. So much energy, so much care, so much openness, clarity, insight, discernment. All of these are innate qualities, compassion. These are not contrived. These are not contrived, not something we need to cultivate and try to effort for. So what, next time you feel lazy, you know, the coconuts are so sweet and all the beautiful story you told us, great, you know. Allow it to be as it is, it's just the next data stream. What opens up is the perspective of how we can be of benefit to all. So this is not a self-help project. It might seem so in the beginning, but what comes about when we are empowered by the power of open intelligence in short moments many times, there's all of this deep wish to want to be of benefit to others. It's, we can't stop it. And then each one of us, we do whatever we want to do that will serve the greater benefit to all. It's innate. And that's why it's so powerful when we do it together with others. So. Yeah, like I said, lazy people wouldn't 
be here for four weeks just resting and then suddenly there's a beautiful center that accommodates trainings and events and meals for four months. It wouldn't work if we, oh yeah, I'm just resting. <laughs> you know, see you tomorrow, I'll rest then. And no, we are empowered, we are activated and it's a global community. So many projects are going on right now as we speak globally and everyone feels the same. And the level of cooperation, the level of care, it's incredible. When we no longer are victims of our data streams, when we take responsibility for the instinctive recognition of open intelligence, we can finally get along with people. <laughs> In a consistent way, constant way, where it doesn't matter what the background of the person or what the even political beliefs. I, I was in the U.S. Um, uh, before the elections and it was amazing. I heard all kinds of opinions. I went from San Francisco to Cleveland. So for those of you who are aware of, of the politics in the U.S., there are quite uh, uh, extremes there. So it was so amazing to see. I can feel completely open hearted, open-hearted, and I can understand anyone, regardless of their belief systems and assumptions. Where before I was very much divided, whoa, right-wing, left-wing, no, 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 wait. Vegetarian, vegan, uh, meat-eater, oh, no, 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 wait. I, I, my set of belief system was so uh, defined that it was hard to be open-hearted to everyone. It was very specific. I had my manual the people I like, <laughs> the people I don't like. <laughs> what I like about myself, what I don't like about others. And so boring, you know. <laughs> In complete relaxation, there's just deep understanding to everyone. What makes them tick? If I had the same data streams that they have, I would act in the same way. So, you see, that's so powerful. I did the 12 empowerments, which is a fundamental training into the nature of our own intelligence with many questions that allows us to reflect uh, individually as, and as a group on the kind of glasses that we put, the filters in which we viewed reality and in which we viewed our relationships and all like the things I just shared now, preferring these data streams over others and so on. And just creating harmony and peace in a very direct way. It's a 12-part um, training. So when I did this, I then went, uh, after a while, I went back to visit my family. And I, on the way, I was very, I, I listened to talks and I took short moments and I read the text and I was kind of preparing myself. And I thought, I'm really interested to know how it will be back home. I know that open intelligence is present in Goa, <laughs> in Dharamsala and in Rishikesh. I proved that to myself. <laughs> but then, will it be present in the Middle East? That was a bit like, <laughs> no way, it's too intense there. And uh, lo and behold, <laughs> the first short t moment I took in the Middle East, I was like, whoa, my parents are even more beautiful and shining. My house is the place where I grew most of my life is an incredible place gratitude started to flow in. The instinctive recognition, my ability to connect with the people that I've been through all of my life suddenly was like, it's, oh, it's so easy. Where before I used to come from a project, a self-project in India, come back home and I locked myself in the room because I, I didn't want anything to touch my purity. <laughs> so it was very unpractical, you know. My poor parents, they see me like once a year or something and then I'm stuck in my room trying to remain pure <laughs> until I buy the next ticket to India. It was ridiculous, you know, I, feel, I felt very sorry for that. <coughs> you know, it's not the way to relate to, to ourselves or others. Everything is pure. My anger is pure and open, I don't need to act on it. My desire, my sadness, my frustration, everything is pure and open. And with this clarity of mind, we can be of benefit, take actions that are of benefit to, to all without being limited by data, random descriptions. So it's possible, but you need to test it in your own 
everyday life. Next time you speak with your parents or next time you fight with your partner or not partner, um, take a short moment and see how it goes. Just briefly, uh, before I pass on to George, uh, Balance View offers uh, an empowerment network, a global empowerment network that is comprised of the practice of short moments repeated many times until it becomes continuous, trainings that are available to anyone who is interested to dive further into this amazing, uh, amazing magical life, texts and media and talks and books, everything that is available face-to-face -face and online. We have trainers. Uh, in Balance View there, there's a founder, Candice, and around 40 trainers, all sharing their experience, direct experience, someone we can relate to. So if you don't relate to trainer A, for sure out of 40 you can relate to, to others. So it's not just the one, one person. And trainers are available and dedicated to serve us to make it easier for us to recognize open intelligence. And we have a community of people. Empowered people that are fed up with the nonsense that we've been taught from this age and all the nonsense we taught ourselves about how flawed and limited we are, we are, suddenly people are opening up and this is what's happening globally. And the, this we call this empowerment network, we call it the Four Mainstays. So you'll hear it a lot in talks and in the text that we have. All of the Four Mainstays together are just perfect. They make something that maybe seems so complicated, they make it so easy.